a very good morning good afternoon and good evening to all our subscribers who are watching us from different parts of the world we welcome you to the first episode of international citizenship talk season 1 before we start the vlog we would like to mention it that this vlog is meant for educational purpose only we do not promote any individual or an organization we also suggest you do your due diligence before making any kind of investment decisions so without wasting much of time let us call on our special guest for today ms lena motwani vice president arthan capital on boards hi lena welcome hi mayank hello everyone uh, thank you mayank for this great opportunity i think it is it's a very uh, interesting discussion uh, that we can advise people on whatever questions they may have in future fantastic thank you so much lena lena we would like to hear more about you about your expertise and how this the residency business came along what are the new developments So, firstly, we would like to hear from you about your expertise in this field itself, please. Sure. Thank you. He- Hello, everyone. Again, uh, different parts of the world. So, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Again, my name is Lena Motwani, and I'm the vice president with Artin Capital. Artin Capital has been in this industry over two decades now, um, and uh, we are the largest global uh, citizenship uh, advisory firm, uh, dealing completely into citizenship by investment and residency by investment industry. Uh, I have personally about 25 years of experience, out of which 15 years is particularly with the citizenship by investment industry, and my markets are predominantly India, Indians worldwide, uh, Vietnam, a bit of Africa, and the Middle East. Fantastic! Thank you so much for the introduction, Lena. Moving forward, can you give a brief overview about Arden Capital's missions and key objectives as to how you guys have been functioning in the market? What are the new developments? Sure. Well, Arden Capital's uh, core mission is uh, global citizenship. Okay, uh, we believe strongly, always, uh, currently, in the past, and always in the future, in global mobility, and we want to empower every person as as far as possible with a global citizenship or a global residency. Uh, so that's our mission, and uh, we do this through offering our clients uh, bespoke services in these particular uh, industry. depending upon their requirements and uh, we are a very strong advisory firm uh, doing this for a long time awesome so what motivates arden capital to focus on intersection of the global citizenship and the migration advisory firms okay this comes uh, across as our president armand arden always said that we can't choose where we were born but we can always choose where we want to live okay so the mm-hmm. whole idea or the inception comes across from that and uh, the happiness that we see on the families faces uh, when we empower them with this strong uh, uh, document is is something that drives us and thrives us to do what we do nice so what 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 basically uh, is is like the usp of arden capital what basically keeps you different from the other service providers in the market okay I truly feel that uh, we are a global firm, and when I say that, uh, we often bridge the gaps between the investors and the governments. Okay, we are currently mandated with about more than 14 governments, and we are working strongly with another three countries to bring in new programs. Um, having said that, uh, what we expertise is uh, in local expertise, which means that we have uh, more than 19 offices. We have over. 30 uh, team members speaking different uh, languages so what happens is when you have um, onboarded a particular investor from any part of the world right from the time that we onboarded till we give him uh, the final uh, whatever he's here for the citizenship or residency he is handled with utmost care um, with a lot of transparency which is again important and um, mayank uh, something which is very important in this industry for the reason that we are government agents also is that uh, every uh, application or every investor should should uh, we we do thorough due diligence okay that's very important uh, compliances are met with both ends again and this makes us i think a little different than what we are many a times as sales people or of my team they feel that why are we not being able to you know on board this client but there is something you know which we do not want to so if the compliance and due diligence doesn't meet we just don't do that and i think that's the cutting edge for sure no that's one of the phenomenal ways of working because that's going to give you more sustainable development in, in the future i agree with you completely yeah yeah so can you give some notable highlights or notable projects and success stories where arten capital has been involved in the past of course 
Uh, firstly, I would like to say that uh, we've been very instrumental with uh, most of the governments in, in terms of uh, changing their programs or in terms of uh, eligibility criteria or shaping up theirs. We, we've been very instrumental in filling up the tenders, etc. So having said that, uh, we are very instrumental in bringing the programs in the market which are existing today. And this starts way, way ahead as of, um, I would say, in 2008, 2009, because we are the Quebec licensed uh, providers, you know. So we were very key uh, market players for the Quebec investor program as well. So having said that, I think, um, uh, as I said, we, we do with these all five, uh, five citizenship programs, for example. Uh, sixth one is the, the another one which is emerging, a couple of residency programs. So we're very instrumental in bringing these in a correct manner. Now, why are we uh, innovative is because um, uh, we actually were the first one instrumental to bring in something in the industry, which is called as a global citizen forum. OK, now this forum is nothing but it's a it's a non profitable platform uh, wherein we bring notable uh, industry leaders, uh, prime ministers or people who are, you know, you know, wanting to do something or uh, give a message to the world and do some impact uh, things in the world. And uh, we generally uh, relate to the pressing uh, discussion or whatever the issues are currently going on and try to bring in solutions for these people. So this is one one thing which I think uh, is very different, what we have uh, incepted with. And uh, in terms of technology, uh, if I would put across, it's the passport index, um, which we invented. Okay, now this is the only... A uh, live uh, global ranking system for the passports, for your global mobility, for you to compare the passports, for you to see the visa free accesses, all of that. So it's a very instrumental and a very important tool which has been used um, not only by the industry people, but today by most of the travelers, I would say. Quite interesting, actually. I would like to mention to our viewers that uh, way back in 2016 17, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we got the opportunity to visit your office and meet you there itself. So you did mention about the global uh, passport index and we got a view of that too. So it was That's really, very really interesting. And I think this is one of the biggest USP for any of the service providers when it comes to. Uh, because yeah, you, you get the, the basic idea as to how the market functions and what are the best opportunities available for you. So this is something that one should always look in for. Also, also sometimes you have questions that, you know, like I, come on, I have a good passport. I have a... Uh, you know, these many visa free countries, I have this two years multiple entry visa, why do I need this? But you know, these these visas are different. What you have in terms of global mobility, this ranking uh, system shows you very, very well. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So what are the some of the common misconceptions about the investment migration? And how do you think Arden Capital best address them as well? Well, yeah, I remember when I started my journey with this industry uh, a few years ago, and when I used to go and uh, speak to people what I do, they said, is this even legal? Uh, does this even happen? Can we even buy passports? You know, so many things like um, uh, who buys these? I think people who have tax issues, uh, is it a quick fix, etc., etc. So I think there are uh, multiple uh, questions uh, even today that, that my investors would have, multiple of them. I, on a daily basis, I think as a team, we uh, we speak to more than uh, 40, 50 investors. You know, that's the amount of traffic uh, that comes to our website. OK, now that's why I also feel that we are very different is because we are advisors and we strongly feel that we should be advising rather than selling. And that's what we do. And our team is very well known for that. It's fine if I don't close the sale. But as a, as a consultant, at least I have guided you correctly to let you know what are the facts. So this is very important. And well, uh, that's led us where we are today, for sure. No, that's very well said, because the ultimate aim is to get the information and the right information to the audience. That's correct. Uh, that's correct. If, if that is missing, and that is one of the reasons we are here, we are talking that right now, because that's that's the, the crux of all the discussions that we have in the past. Two. So I great. Agree. Even, even uh, let me tell you, like, predominantly India is my market. Okay, now in India, as you know, dual citizenship is not allowed. So that Absolutely. doesn't mean that, you know, so so it's very important uh, when when I advise people as to what is it? How do you surrender the passport? What is it for you to get on OCI? Is there any benefits that you lose uh, when you're surrendering your Indian passports? And thankfully, over the years, even I have learned this uh, because I meet different, uh, uh, you know, I cross paths with different type of people, different uh, industry people. 
uh, Indians who are inside India, Indians who are NRIs, a lot of uh, different combinations, right? So mm -hmm. each product is not made for every person, as I say. So that's why it's tailor-made. Our advisory um, is tailor-made. And of course, we uh, we just don't open a Pandora box or a menu of services and say, you know, you choose it. No, we listen to the requirements. We understand what it is. And that's what uh, we, we probably navigate to the, them to the right decisions. So basically, if somebody comes to you and asks you for a particular set of uh, uh, residency and citizenship by investment options, so yeah. you recommend based on their criteria. If somebody has favoring for it, say, for example, if somebody comes to you and say, okay, I would like to go for Cyprus, for example, uh, then you, of course, check their credibility, check their criteria, and of course, check their requirements. And accordingly, you suggest, no, this is going to be a better option. Don't go. Well, for I this. first try to understand always what are, what, what are they currently doing? What are their needs? Somebody would, would plan this for their retirement. Somebody is planning this for complete mobility. It's like, you know, um, I, I know of like, I have so many clients who are into perfume industry, okay? And then they have some immediate events coming up, let's say in Paris or somewhere in Germany. And, you know, let's not even discuss about the Schengen visa appointments, whether it's in India, Dubai, everywhere around the world, it's, it's a mess currently. Absolutely. So global mobility, even for a businessman, even for a retired person, even for a student these days is very important. So to understand this, maybe as, as a um, businessman, you don't want the mobility. You say, you know, I'm fine in India or I'm fine in, uh, you know, XYZ country and I don't want to. But you, it's something that you pass it on to your generations, right? So maybe mm -hmm. your kid requires it because he gets the education outside and he's not bound uh, with all these things. So, yes, it's very, very tailor-made. Fantastic, fantastic. So this is one of the FAQs that we normally receive in all our conferences and exhibitions that we have done so far, which says, what are the key factors individuals should consider when exploring investment migration options? Hmm. Uh, that's a very interesting uh, question, yeah. even which I have. I've okay. taken the question one level up because that was the discussion which was going on right now. So I thought it's going to be better if you can answer this first. Correct. So again, it... it sort of re replicates my answer as well. It depends upon what the person wants. Somebody needs global mobility. Uh, somebody requires it because of their tax objective. Somebody wants to have multiple offices across the globe and hence having a residency and doing that is more important. Um, health, education and security has always been the key points for all these uh, global citizenship or, uh, programs, you, you see. Uh, it's, it's like, it's very funny, but sometimes I get questioned that, uh, Hey, uh, I would like to be a global citizen. How do I do that? So, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like as if it's one passport that says global citizen. It's not like a country passport, you know? So we've been reckoned that much uh, with, with our global citizenship. Uh, so that's what I said. Now, it also depends on cost and time frame. For example, someone says that, listen, I need a citizenship and I don't want to wait for five years. For example, let's take an, take an example of Greece uh, right now, which is doing very, very uh, uh, popular in, in most of the markets. Greece allows you to get the residency. It's a permanent residency program. However, if you stay in that country after X, Y, Z years, you are eligible to get the citizenship. Now, there must be somebody who's saying, no, I need a, I need a citizenship program now. So these are the factors, uh, key factors that as an investor, they would want to choose a, a particular program depending on that. And then, of uh, course, we guide them accordingly. Example, in certain programs, you know, you can include your siblings, you can include your in-laws, your in-laws, your spouse's in-laws. So we obviously tell them that might as well when you're spending this much, you add, you know, the extended family and get it for everyone. Why not? No, makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. Because it's 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 one of the biggest investments one is making and it's meant for future. So, of course, it makes I, sense to have the family involved. So, I, great. Yeah. So how does Artman Capital ensures compliances with international regulations and ethical standard in its operations? So this is a very, very, uh, I would say, uh, a generic but an important question to be asked because there are so many changes in rules and regulation which is happening in the current scenario. Uh, day before yesterday, I have uh, heard about uh, the the uh, Greece uh, changes which is happening. Uh, Increasing, yeah. Limit. Now, in yeah. fact, the US is also coming up with certain guidelines. So we would like to hear from you on that too. Okay. Look, um, Artin works closely with the reputable due diligence and compliance agency. Okay, uh, this is the step one we do with every investor who wants to start any program. And we do not compromise on this. And I, I've said this with experience. Uh, uh, I cannot explain you certain things that have been avoided, thankfully, because of this platform as well. Okay, 
So we, we do that because not only that we are responsible for the investor, because this would lead to a faster and easier processing of his application as well, because we would, you know, we would understand that what would come across as a bump. Um, and we suggest him that, listen, there's something like this. Would you like to tell us more about it? We discuss that issues with our lawyers and we come back. This is more important for us because we are mandated with certain governments. So it's about our track record with these applications as well. And let me tell you, this due diligence is free of cost. It's not like any other uh, thing that ha if you want to do it, you pay us this much and it comes. No, I'm sorry. This is equally more important for me than the investor. So it's just a quick KYC document, passport copies. We upload it within 24 hours. Uh, we get back with the due diligence report. So this is number one uh, stage, which cannot be um, compromised at any given point of time. So Arten, uh, Arten does have its branch offices elsewhere as well, and your partners, co-partners in different uh, parts of the world. Yes, yes, yes. We have about more than 500 certified partners uh, globally. Uh, we have about 19 offices uh, worldwide. Predominantly, any country that we are offering, we definitely have an office, uh, either a legal office or a sales office, both ways. So, but we are represented in most of the places. Okay. And uh, the channel partners as well have to run through a compliance, by the way. So it's not that I, I we could randomly appoint somebody as a certified partner. No, he also goes through the same uh, level of due diligence. And that's when he can represent, he or she can represent Art and Capital and represent the applications thereafter. Excellent. So this is one of the main information for our subscribers and uh, viewers right now that it's important to have offices in countries where you are actually representing them and offering the residency and citizenship and investment options. Uh, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah sorry to cut you there, but yeah, you, you're right there as well. Why? Because local expertise, local political situations, local banking regimes, and local tax issues, these are, these cannot be, uh, you know, advised or this cannot be done without we having presence in that office. So Absolutely. that's why we have legal representation in most of them. We have lawyers sitting in every office, and that's why, because the questions come in different manners and different uh uh, arenas for us, you know, like if I would have done this, that's what it is. And tax is a very complicated, uh, you know, absolutely, absolutely. question altogether. We are not uh, expertised in that, but basic questions should be answered as per since we are the consultants. Yes, absolutely. And we live in a dynamic world and it's changing every moment, uh, whether it's one country or the other. And we have to function accordingly if you're actually looking for any kind of investments there too. So mm -hmm. I completely respect that and it, it's, it's important to understand the fact that yes, you have your local presence available, which yeah. all the more gives a more goodwill to the people who are investing as well. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, so moving forward, uh, so uh, what are the recent uh, trends uh, or developments you have been foreseeing uh, in the investment migration industry in the coming years? I mean, okay. what do you think will be the next big spot for or next big hub for investments uh, when it comes from India specifically to start with? And then you can, of okay. course, give the Sure. Uh, with my experience in India uh, for these many years, uh, let me tell you that India, because of maybe the dual nationality or the dual citizenship issue, uh, most of them are very uh, keen on the dual residency. So Portugal, Hungary, Greece has seen a huge, tremendous uh, flow of uh, investments from India, even Canada for that matter. And the second popular is, of course, the citizenship people who, who know what they want. They are just jumping in directly to the citizenship programs. Uh, in respect to the changes, the whole industry is coming to, to a lot of changes in terms of investments, eligibility, criteria, etc. But I would say the industry itself is at a very infant stage and uh, we are yet to see um, many, many things that are changing in this and that would have a, a repercussion on uh, applications or I mean, I think tenfold of what, what we are seeing at this moment of time, especially with India. Uh, because I think the market has emerged now. They understand uh, why we should be taking these global residencies, why we should be having this. People have started considering this as an insurance, uh, which is something as a plan B, mm. you need to have it. Okay. Uh, and I see that trend myself, especially after COVID, especially after 2020, uh, the rise is uh, tremendous and uh, people are discussing. Uh, also, maybe it takes time. Uh, obviously, it's not a decision that people take, you know, overnight. So I see that the Indian market generally has a tendency uh, to, to take decisions a little lengthier time than other nationalities, in my opinion. Uh, but again, with residencies, it's far off. In terms of changing, 
I think uh, with the CBI, uh, I'm sure most of the market knows, but uh, the, the citizenship by investment, especially the Caribbeans, are going to increase their prices very soon. So in next 30 to 60 days, we are going to see them doubling. Uh, so the, the, for us, the, the rush has already begun and we're seeing a lot of influx of applications coming in. Regarding the residential programs, as you already know, uh, Portugal has already stopped the 280 and the 350, the real estate, and it started with the fund. Uh, Greece is going to increase the minimum investment from 250 to 400 in July. Um, Hungary is something that we are going to launch. So certain programs narrow down, certain opportunities open up. That's what the industry, the beauty of this industry is. Uh, so when, whenever, whenever any of my prospects ask me, you know, when should I take this? Do you think it's the right time? Yes. Right time was yesterday. So mm -hmm. it's, it's now. It's now. So the moment we wait, uh, things change. Eligibility changes. The kids' age increases. So you simply have to pay the due diligence charges after the age of 16, you know. Below 16, it's not there. Uh, police clearance is one of the documents. So a lot of documentation becomes increases, rather. Uh, and it becomes easier if you start it very soon. I would say it like that. Fantastic, fantastic. No, absolutely makes sense. So, from a from an investor perspective, per se, say for example, uh, one of the viewers in this session wants to do some kind of an investment uh, through Art and Capital. So, what are the client relationship management system that you follow? What are the CRM that you normally follow? How it's gonna be? How much money? How much time does it take to get the money in uh, involved? How much uh, efforts they have to put in terms of the paperwork and all? Can you just give a small step-by-step uh, -step kind of a, uh, an arrangement of the process as to how one of has course, to go? Of course. Firstly, um, uh, we have an in-house, uh, a very, very attractive in-house uh, system, which is called as Apollo, uh, which from the day one, the, the client's information is reached to the desk of Art and Capital, is, is completely safe and secure. Okay, As you would may know, this, this process requires a lot of personal documents uh, handling. Uh, so the NDA is at utmost uh, importance for us, right? So all the documents are are in the system from the day one that they come across. Now, certain programs are in stages. Certain programs is, is in just two stages. Now, let me touch quickly the citizenship by investment. So let's say an Antigua and Barbuda a citizenship application. It runs in three uh, processes. First, we onboard the client, uh, the investor. He chooses the investment mode, whether it's donation or real estate. The process is the same. Um, uh, we charge them 50% of our advisory fees uh, in the beginning before we onboard and then we start the documentation. When the file is completely ready and put up, the, the investor transfers the government fees, whatever the due diligence fees and in certain countries they ask for a 10% deposit, etc. If it's a real estate, then he pays a 10% to, to the developer and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Once the application is submitted, then you give it time. Certain countries take 90 days, certain countries take four to five months. Uh, for approval. These days, there are certain countries. We, let's not get into that discussion. I mean, I'm more than happy to uh, give one-on-one -on -one, um, advisory information to anybody who's uh, looking for it, for sure. I keep traveling to India uh, very often, as you know, as well, and uh, have experience in building Indian applications. Now, once you do that, after the approval is come in, then the applicant transfers the funds to the government account directly or the developer's account, whichever mode he has chosen. Uh, and then you again give it a cooling period about 30 to 40 days uh, for the passports to be printed, um, you know, and the naturalization certificate, et cetera, et cetera. And then the things are sent across to. Now we take utmost uh, interest and uh, security in terms of handling these things. So we expect that the applicants come to our office and collect it. As I said, we are having multiple offices. They can be present anywhere or uh, we send it under a, uh, secured uh, system, uh, the delivery to, to individual people. We not only are very instrumental in getting them the first step, but by now many people have come back to, to renewals. So we handle their renewals. We have family additions, a child is born, the person is married, etc., etc. So even adding that is, is a kind of a thing. So generally these are the steps. In terms of the European programs, let's uh, take uh, the example of Greece, which is more popular now. Uh, let's say it, it requires an investment of 250,000 uh, euros. So obviously, when I'm advising the, the investor, I tell him what are the opportunities available, what are the projects. Some of them uh, would re require for a capital appreciation. Someone looks for an ROI. So whatever the solutions are, whatever the requirements are, we match that uh, as close as possible. 
and we we onboard the applicant. Once we uh, onboarded the investor, he pays again. In terms of Europe, we charge all the fees upfront because that's the nature of that program. Uh, then uh, certain programs require you to go uh, physically there mm -hmm. to give your biometrics, come back, make the investment, and you get the residence visa. So every program is uh, very different. Canada, for example, is the uh, startup visa, uh, wherein we look for the business uh, investment for him, uh, make up the application, we get him the let letter of support, et cetera, et cetera. So all the programs, however, for the client, it's one-stop shop. We help him right from the time of inception till he's finished the process uh, in terms of advisory, in terms of uh, documentation, filling up the forms, you know, where do we get the notary done from? Where do we attest it? Everything. Everything is managed and we have experienced uh, processing team who handles completely. So there is an advisor who onboards an investor. There is a full-fledged processing team and a processing head as well. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the investor can reach out to all these three parties at any given point of time. Excellent. I think this was one of the best explanation in terms of the individual yeah, investments. I think the most practical explanation. I'm, I just did not sugarcoat it. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, one advice or one disclaimer you would like to give uh, to our viewers if they are planning to do certain investments internationally for gaining residency and citizenship? Sure. Firstly, uh, do give us a chance to Autumn Capital. Um, uh, we are definitely trustworthy, and I can explain that uh, in, in one of our meetings, in the first meeting itself, that you have a talk with us. Uh, so, that's one. Second, uh, we have experience with most of the both, most of the Indian applicants uh, filing the, the terms of documentation, etc. And the last thing I would say is act now because you don't know what is available tomorrow. So it's it's always something that if you think that you have this, uh, I wouldn't say a budget as such, but if you think you have the inclination even towards it, I think you're done. You're at the right step. So just reach out to us and uh, we can tell you, we can guide you. We can try to navigate you to the right decisions. That's all I can say. Fantastic, Lena. Thank you so much for the, the really uh, improving discussion that we had. I think people would definitely would like to uh, get a lot of questions asked to you. I would request everybody to kindly leave your questions in the comment boxes. And also, uh, we'll be putting in the details in the description for any information which is required from Martin Capital. So uh, last but not the least, finally, of course, you guys already have a passport index. And I would like to relate this last question to you, that how do you think that the innovation is basically enhancing the efficiency and efficacy of uh, the whole uh, RCI system? Uh, what exactly you want me to touch basically, there? So specifically, as you have mentioned about the passport index, uh, that's one of the main USPs of art and capital. How yes. do you think it has really changed the uh, shape or the scenario in the, in the, in the current uh, times to go? Uh, specifically when it comes for investments? Okay. Well, it's not so instrumental in terms of investments, but probably it's more instrumental in deciding which investment or which country you want to decide. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly because obviously it, it tells you at, at one glance as to where you stand currently, which is your current passport or your current nationality and what you want to achieve at one glance. So you can compare three passports, four passports at one time or four countries at a time and understand what it gives you. Now, many people do not probably understand even uh, what is a visa free, what is a ETA, uh, what is visa on arrival. So these are three different things as well. Okay. And this particular tool gives you exact transparent information about this. However, when it also tells you about ETA, it has links to take you to the respective government websites. So you're not uh, depending on any random Google search. No. We have validated those information and that's why this information is here. And I repeat that, that this information is um, is completely up to date with any information or any changes, that slightest changes that the governments bring across. So right. that's why I think it's instrumental. And I, most of them definitely, definitely visit there. We have a huge uh, traffic uh, reaching out on Passport Index on a daily basis. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lena. And I would also recommend all our viewers to kindly do your due diligence before making any kind of investment decisions. And uh, last line to sum up, Lena, from you. Last line is uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I urge all the investors to definitely uh, uh, reach out to us or, you know, try to take these opportunities that are currently available in the market. 
Uh, we are happy to do another session on different topics that if you would like us to dive through, for example, just the residency or anything. And uh, I'm sure Mayank will be happy to host those kind of uh, you know podcasts as well. So thank you everyone again. And I uh, hope a uh, very good evening to everyone. And uh, I wish to see everyone as a global citizen one day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lena. And to all our viewers, please do like, subscribe, and do uh, uh, press the bell icon for more information in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lena. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.